Yes, hello. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here to uh, hear the voice of our Director General, and uh, I'm very happy to, about this uh, conversation we are about to have with you, Andrew. Um, and to answer your question, well, the short answer is it's, uh, it's quite important, I would say. Uh, I think that the International Space Station, where I have the pleasure and the privilege of being right now, is a testament uh, to international cooperation. And uh, certainly, uh, Russia is an important partner in, uh, in this endeavor. Uh, but just in, you know, and, and, and the space station, just to clarify, is really an integrated facility where um, components of provided by different countries and different agencies are integrated together and really can function only as a whole. Um, and that include the Russian segment, the USS segment, uh, and also this uh, uh, piece of Europe up here in space, which is the Columbus uh, Laboratory. Uh, so, but in, in general, uh, space exploration is indeed, uh, I think, an, an area of human endeavors in which uh, international cooperation has proven key uh, to achieve uh, success, and the ISS is really a testament to that. You know, I think that on a on a personal level, we are, we, you know, we are all. Uh, uh, saddened and devastated by uh, the events uh, ongoing in the current conflict, and, and, and that's a fact. Um, but at the same time, in terms of our relationships here on board, I think what prevails and, and um, informs our relations and our work together on a daily basis is, on a personal level, our personal friendship to our, our colleagues, whom we have known for quite, quite a long time, uh, and on a professional level, our, our common commitment to the success of the mission and to continuing all the amazing work of science and technological advancement that we uh, perform on a daily basis here on the International Space Station, which again is a product of integrated work of many international partners. Yeah, I, I think that global Big challenges like uh, obviously climate change and inequality uh, have are best faced when societies have at their disposals powerful tools, and those tools are knowledge, technologies, and general, uh, uh, you know, strong economies. And so I think that there's two ways of answering your questions. I mean, of course, I could go and go off and tell you about all the space-based assets that monitor the Earth on a daily basis. And some appear by the, some of those are, are free-flying satellites, but some of those are here installed on the external platforms of the International Space Station because they benefit from the fact that they have this platform and all the power that is available and, you know, the data transfer. Um, and so, and, and you know, and, and that it was possible to install them here. So I, I could go off and tell you that, but I, I think that one should also have a more holistic perspective and understand that space is really part of our lives, of our technological development, of our scientific advancements, ultimately of our um, you know, economic resources and the technological and scientific resources that we overall have at our disposal to tackle challenges, especially like, like climate change. So as we develop space capabilities and the space economy, that becomes a multiplier of all the technological tools that we have at our disposals to tackle climate change and, you know, all the great challenges that face humanity. Yeah, I think that that is a, a very exciting and positive development. I think that a, uh, a cooperation between the private and the, and the public sector uh, is going to bring us a lot of benefits. I think that the private sector, when it comes in, it probably brings um, an, an agility, uh, an ability to innovate, uh, you know, competition, the, the power of the, of the market economy when it's brought upon the space business is, uh, is bound to, you know, be partially disrupt it, but certainly help uh, develop it, uh, make it more resilient, make it more affordable from an economic point of view, so that, again, as I mentioned earlier, all these space capabilities can really be leveraged from many, many uh, diverse um, industrial, societal, economic 
uh, sectors and you know space is not this thing out there doing things on its own but it's integrated in the web of society and uh, and economy so this is I think the benefit that bringing in a lot of commercial actors will bring um, uh, you know the uh, as I mentioned earlier I'm, I'm, I'm here in Columbus the European laboratory on board externally to Columbus we have an external platform which is an example of this uh, uh, public-private partnership which is uh, Columbus in the rack right next to me there is another example which is the ice cubes uh, uh, research facilities so you know also in Europe there is uh, um, you know some of, of that um, private public partnership already ongoing and we're certainly striving to get that more and more uh, the second time is very different uh, not worse or better, but uh, different. I would say that the first time I came um, to space station as a rookie, it was quite overwhelming. Uh, you know, all the way from from launch, uh, it, it was this influx of, of new experiences, new physical sensations, new skills that I had to learn. You know, like like floating in, in zero g uh, and handling this uh, rather complex environment of uh, of space station and handling the work up there or up here. Um, and and I, I think. Um, if I looked back at those, especially those first days and weeks, it was all a little bit of a blur. I didn't have very clear memories. And so I was really looking forward to come up here a second time as a veteran astronaut this time and have a little bit more of both cognitive and emotional buffer to experience this a little bit more in slow motion. And it's definitely been the case. I mean, you know, the, I didn't have to learn everything from scratch. It came, it came back to me fairly quickly, like riding a bicycle, I guess. Uh, and so I, I had that space in, you know, in, in, in my heart and in my mind to um, observe the experience and, and really take note of details and and hopefully also remember it better uh, for for the future Well, this weekend we had uh, quite an excited event. We actually had a brand new um, a space vehicle. It's called uh, Starliner. Uh, that uh, so the prototype, the, uh, the demonstration flight uh, occurred this weekend. So uh, the vehicle came knocking at our door um, in the night between Friday and Saturday, I believe. And uh, we had a pretty intense, uh, short uh, docked mission in which it uh, demonstrated a number of, uh, of capabilities. And then we uh, closed the hatch uh, uh, last night, and it will undock. And, and of course, we are, uh, we are all uh, confident that we will safely land to Earth uh, uh, shortly after that. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, the, there's always a lot of uh, science on board. It's always difficult to pick a favorite, but I will let just uh, proximity choose for me, like what you maybe can glance here in the camera uh, that I'm not supposed to touch, but I set up yesterday is a, a, a facility to demonstrate uh, tele-robotic operations. So once we are uh, ready to do the, the, the demonstration operations, I will actually use this, uh, um, it, it's like a, a haptic controller, so I will hold it in my hand and kind of move my hand but actually on the ground I will be moving remotely the hand of a robot to perform tasks uh, um, remotely so that that's pretty exciting that's uh, stuff that is uh, is going to be useful for future um, surface explorations of, of moon and and hopefully one day of Mars Yeah, um, they have this uh, campaign, which I believe is like the Dream Gap campaign, and uh, the idea is to uh, provide young girls, really, you know, especially starting at a young age, like preschool age, with uh, role models, uh, so that you know they don't, they keep dreaming big. Uh, they do not start to think already like in preschool age that some professions are maybe not suitable for them, some career paths, some, uh, you know, some disciplines that they can study um, in college, for example, are not suited for them. Yeah, that, that's what we want to prevent. You know, when I encourage women to, you know, to, to, to consider STEM careers or consider working in the space sector, I don't necessarily have an end state in mind because, I mean, it, it depends in the end on individual choices and individual freedom, which for me is sacred. But what I, I hope to help accomplish is that, you know, young, you know, girls and, and women feel that freedom. They, you know, they, they, they make those choices knowing that they are free to choose from, you know, the full palette of, of human enterprises.